Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. For today's crochet love fest, we're making a bell sleeve top. This one is a bit of a remake from a project from the past with a few modifications and tricks we've learned along the way. There's an overlapping band across the flirtatious plunging v-neck, bodacious bell sleeves, and a lightly textured bottom section for tons of movement and flow. Speaking of, if this crochet make matches your flow, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet tutorials and patterns, including many like this one here, dropping twice weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting on free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get this show on the road, so without further ado, for this project, any category 3 yarn will work, but I used a total of 350 grams of yarn. That's 1,250 yards if you're state side. As for tools, a 4 and 5.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCD to buy for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us how long you've been subscribed. This channel has been alive for roughly 7 years now, isn't that crazy? Details of the giveaway down below. We're using three stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. And half double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and I'll explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 3 yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 4 millimeter hook and start off by making a chain that starts 1 inch underneath the underarm down to our under bust, so roughly where our underwire would be. Now I need roughly 5 inches or 13 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 24. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do our first slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. So insert your hook, then yarn over and gently pull through both of those loops on your hook. Again, into that next chain, insert, pull through both, and that's it. Continue with one slip stitch into every chain, leaving the last one, but be sure not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row will be way too tight to work into. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, leaving the last one, into that last one we're going to be doing an increase. Now the increases that we're going to do is going to be two single crochets into that last stitch. Now just as a really quick tip, we're doing single crochets instead of slip stitches because doing two slip stitches into the same stitch can get a little messy. So just to make sure that we're getting everything done correctly, into that last chain we're going to insert, there we go, starting with one single crochet, so we're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then a second single crochet into that same last chain. So insert, pull through, pull through two. And also doing single crochets for the increase, it looks pretty much the same as the slip stitches anyways. So what we're going to do from here is start off our following row with an increase as well. So chain one and flip our work. Now just for the increase, we're going to be doing two back loop single crochets into that first stitch. So taking a look at the last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop with one single crochet then into that same back loop with a second single crochet. Then from here, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So getting that started, find that next stitch, insert into that back loop, yarn over, and again gently pull through everything on your hook. Again, next stitch, back loop, pull through everything. From here, continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now just to do the increase together again, at the end of this row, chain one, Flip our work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last one, and then I'll meet you back to do our increase. We are back in our first one, two, 
three rows are nearly finished. We should have all left that last stitch for our third row. Now we're going to do our increase together again. So into that last stitch, we're going to be doing an increase of two back loop single crochets. So there's my first, into that same stitch with my second, and since we're here just to get started on our following even number row, chain one, flip our work and it's going to start with an increase as well. So into that first stitch is back loop, insert, oops, with one back loop single, same stitch with a second back loop single, then from here continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here what we're going to do is continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have a portion that can stretch and we do want to make sure that we're stretching it as if we're wearing it from mid underarm over to the front of our body so roughly where a bra strap or a tank top strap would be. Then I'll meet you back right after an odd number row so we can work straight into the shoulder from there. So we are back. My underarm portion is complete. I have a total of 11 rows. My width is roughly an inch or two centimeters that is unstretched. And now from here, we're all going to make a chain that reaches up to the top of our shoulder. So making sure that we're placing this tail end still at one inch underneath our underarm, because if it falls a little bit lower, our armhole is going to be a little bit wider than we want it to be. We're going to make a chain of any amount of chains, making our way up to the top of our shoulder, like I said. Now I need roughly five inches or 13 centimeters. So I went ahead and made a chain of 25. And now from here, we're just going to be doing back loop slip stitch rows for the shoulder portion. So what we're going to do is just to get started on the following row, block off that last chain and do a chain one. We're going to slip stitch into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. So into that chain, yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. And from here, put one slip stitch into every chain. Once we reach the body portion, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then I'll meet you back. So we're back. We've made our way all the way down with our first shoulder row. Like I said, for the shoulder portion, we aren't going to have any increases or decreases. So at the end of the row, just chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way all the way back up, and then repeat. We are going to continue to repeat that slip stitch row, again with no increases and no decreases, until we get a shoulder portion that reaches roughly two inches away from the base of our neck. Then I'll meet you guys back along the bottom or right after an even number row, and then we can get started on the neckline from there. So we are back. I have just completed my shoulder portion. Now I have a total of 22 rows. My width is roughly two and a half inches or six centimeters unstretched. And now what we're going to do from here is work on the decrease portion of our neckline. So what we're all going to want to do is put our piece up to ourselves, making sure that the tail end for our underarm portion is still remaining at one inch underneath our underarm. Then we're all going to insert our stitch marker into the stitch where we want the neckline to start to curve in. Now I wanted mine to start to curve in right at about mid chest. So I inserted my stitch marker into the 25th stitch from the top. That's roughly five inches or 13 centimeters. And now we're going to get started on our following row. So since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're all going to chain one, flip our work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving two stitches right before our stitch marker left. So we made our way all the way up, leaving the last two stitches right before our stitch marker. Now from here, we're all going to do a decrease of two back loop slips. So what we're going to do is insert our hook into that second to last back loop, yarn over, pull through for two loops on our hook, then into that following stitches back loop. And when we have these three loops on our hook, we're going to automatically yarn over and pull through all three. Now we're going to get started on the following row. So chain one, flip our work. And now we're going to start this row off with a decrease of two back loop slips again. So into that first stitches back loop, we're going to insert yarn over, pull through, then into that next stitches back loop. When we have these three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. Now, just so we can do our decrease together again, at the end of this row, chain one, flip your work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I'll meet you back when we have two stitches left. We are back in the first three rows for our neckline are nearly complete. We should have all left the last two stitches. And now we're gonna do another decrease just as a refresher. So inserting your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, Last stitch is back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and now this row is complete. Since we're here, let's just get started on the following row together as well. So chain one, flip our work, 
and insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through into that next stitch's back loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, all we're going to do is continue to repeat our two previous rows until we now have a neckline portion that can stretch, making sure that we're still stretching it as if we're wearing it over to mid chest. And I'll meet you back right after an odd number row or along the top. We are back. I have just finished up the first half of my front panel. Now I have a total of 44 rows. My width is roughly 5 inches or 13 centimeters unstretched. And now we're all going to do our middle row. So since we should all be along the top, what we're going to do is just do the following row in a row sequence. So chain one, flip our work. Start the following row off with a decrease of two back loop slip stitches, and then continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then I'll meet you back at the end of that row. So we are back. Our middle row is now complete, and before we move on with the rest of this portion of our front panel, we're all going to want to make sure that we're inserting a stitch marker into the top of that middle row. And now what we're going to do is actually just continue on with our two previous rows because this is going to have a wrap over detail. So since we're along the bottom, continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, closing off the row with a decrease of two back loop slip stitches. The following row is going to start with a decrease of two back loop slip stitches and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch till you reach the end. From here, like I said, continue to repeat those two rows until we now have a front panel portion that can stretch over to the other side of the base of our neck. And then I'll meet you guys back right after an odd number row or along the top and then we can get started on the inner wrap portion together. So we are back. I have just finished up my continued decrease rows after my middle row and now I have a total of 49 rows. My width is roughly 6 inches or 15 centimeters that is unstretched because remember it does have a good amount of stretch to it. And now from here we're going to start working on the flap. But first things first, we're going to have to do a few things. We're all going to start by counting the amount of rows that we have from this middle row all the way until where we ended. Now I have a total of seven rows, but let's just count that out together to make sure that we know what we're counting. Counting slip stitch rows can be a little tricky because it does kind of mush together. So all we're going to want to do is just stretch it out and we're going to start counting starting from the row that's nearest to our middle row. We are not going to be counting that middle row. So this is my first row, which is this divot here is one. This raised row is two three, four, five, six, and then seven is my last row. We all should have ended along the top. Now what we're all going to do from here is start by making a chain for the same amount of rows that we have for this continued flat portion times two. So again, from this first row on the other side of my middle row, I have a total of seven rows. So we want to take those seven and multiply that times two and make a chain of that number. So since I had seven rows here, I'm going to make a chain of 14. Then from here, we're going to be doing decrease slip stitch rows. So once we have our chain, we're all going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now, since we're along the top, we're all going to start with a decrease of two. So starting with that second chain from our hook, we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through into that next chain. We're going to insert and when we have these three loops on our hook, yarn over and automatically pull through all three. And from here, continue with one slip stitch into every chain, only working into the chain. We aren't going to be working into the side stitches. Now that we put one slip stitch into the rest of our chains, we're now going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch while doing a decrease of two at the end of the row. Now we're going to continue to repeat these two rows. They're basically the same decrease rows that we did for this portion of our neckline until we have the same amount of rows that we did counting from our middle row outwards. So like I've been saying this whole time, I have a total of seven rows here, but for this flap that we are doing, we do want to count that middle row. So I will be doing a total of eight rows. Once when we have that, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. So we are back. I have just finished up my flap. Now, like I said in the previous clip, I had a total of eight rows here, including the middle row. So for my flap, I did a total of eight rows. Now it looks a little crazy right now, but how it's going to work is we're going to take our piece and we're just going to flip it inward like this. And that forms our flap and right where the juncture is, I guess, if you want to call it that, it should be roughly where our middle row is. And we'll connect it into there once we get closer to the end of the piece. 
but all we're going to do from here is continue on with the increases for the rest of the neckline to match this increase over here. So for everyone, no matter what size we're making, we're all going to insert our hook into this top corner stitch. It does need to be in the top. And now we're going to start the following row off with an increase of two single crochets and then continue on with our back loop single crochets from here. So let's go ahead and insert our yarn onto our hook. So once when our yarn is on our hook, we're going to pull through and do a chain up of one that is just to secure. Now we are going to be working into our flap, so it may kind of flap around, but that is normal. And what we're going to do is into that first stitch, we're going to insert our hook with a back loop single crochet. Now, if you don't have a back loop because we are working into the chain, that's fine for this row, but we're going to start with one single crochet and then into that same stitch with a second single crochet. Now from here, we're going to continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way all the way down to the bottom of our piece. And then I'll meet you back. All right. So now the first row for the increase side of our neckline is complete. All we're going to do from here is chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And into the last, we're all going to do an increase of two back loop single crochets. So this portion of our neckline is going to be done exactly the same way as our underarm portion that we've already done. Now, how we're going to figure out how many rows we're all going to have to do is we first need to figure out how many rows we have from our first neckline row all the way down until we reach our middle row, but making sure we are not counting that middle row. So for those of you that have my numbers from this first row down to this last row, right before my middle row, I have a total of 19 rows. So along this side, since I did a total of seven rows on this side of my middle row, I'm going to subtract seven from 19 because we all want to make sure that we're ending on the same amount of stitches. And then from here, I'm going to do that amount of rows. So I need to do an additional 12 rows. And then once we have our rows completed, we should all end along the top and then we can work straight into the shoulder from there. We are back. I have just completed the increase portion of our neckline. I now have a total of 61 rows. My width is roughly seven inches or 18 centimeters unstretched. And now from here, we're going to get started on the shoulder. But just as a really quick tip for the last stitch for our last increase row for our neckline, instead of closing it off with an increase of two back loop single crochets, we are going to need to finish it off with an increase of three. We need to finish off with an increase of three just so that the shoulder portion that we're about to do has the same amount of stitches as the first one. So for those of you that are like me that have actually completed our last row, as you guys can see, maybe these are my two back loop single crochets into that last stitch. We're just going to be inserting a third back loop single crochet into that same last stitch. And now it is complete. Now what we're all going to do from here is make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on the neckline portion. So for those of you that have my numbers, I skipped a total of 25 stitches. So now I'm going to make a chain of 25. Now that we have our chain, we are going to be doing the same shoulder portion as the first one. So from here, block off that last chain, do a chain one into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. And from here, continue with one slip stitch into every chain. Then once we reach the body, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We should have the same amount of stitches as our first shoulder portion. Then from here, continue to do our back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of shoulder rows that we had on this side. Now, once we have the same amount of rows, we should all end along the bottom and then I'll meet you back so we can finish up with our underarm. We are back. My second shoulder is complete. I have a total of 72 rows now. My width is roughly eight and a half inches or 21 centimeters, still unstretched. Now we're gonna finish up with our underarm. So first things first, we're all going to start by inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that led all the way up to our shoulders. So for those of you that had my numbers, I made a chain of 25. So on this side, counting from the top, I inserted my stitch marker into the 25th stitch. Now what we're going to do from here, since we should all be along the bottom, is chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving two stitches left right before our stitch marker, and then I'll meet you back. We've made our way up with our first underarm row, leaving two stitches left right before a stitch marker. Now we're all going to do a decrease of two back loop slips. So start by inserting our hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, then into that last back loop. When we have these three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. 
And from here, we're going to start off the next row with a decrease as well. So just chain one and flip our work. Then to start off this row, insert your hook into that first stitches back loop, pull through into that next stitches back loop. When we have these three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And continue with one back loop slip stitch into the rest of our stitches. So this underarm portion is going to be done pretty much the same way that we did the decrease portion of our neckline, just making sure we do a decrease along the top of every row. But just continue to repeat these two previous rows until we end up having the same amount of rows as the first underarm portion. Once when we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. We are back. The entirety of my front panel is complete. Now I have a total of 83 rows. My width is roughly nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters unstretched. I did do a chain up of one and cut right after my last row. And now we're gonna get started on the back panel. The back panel is gonna be done pretty much the same way as the front panel, but without the neckline cut out. So the back panel is so much easier. So I'm just gonna talk you guys through it because I actually already have mine completed. So getting started on the back panel, we're going to do the same exact underarm portion that we did for the front panel for the same amount of rows. Then make the same chain that we made for the front panel that led all the way up to our shoulder. Then from there, we're just going to do back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of total rows that we have from our first shoulder row all the way across to our last shoulder row. Then once we have that width all completed, finish up with the same underarm portion that we just did together, and then I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. So now that we have both our front and our back panel completed, we're now going to seam everything together, starting with the shoulders. So we're all going to place our front panel on top of our back panel, and we're gonna insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back. Insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're going to do our single crochet seam. So all that's gonna be is one single crochet into every side row. So we're all gonna start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here, so I'm gonna find that top loop for that row and insert my hook. Find the first side row within the back panel, this is mine. Find that top loop and single crochet around that. And that's it, let's do this again. This is my next side row, which is this raised row. I'm gonna find that top loop, insert, find my next side row within the back panel, find that top loop, insert, and single crochet around everything. That's it. We're gonna continue on with our single crochet row, putting one single crochet into every side row, working into both the front and the back panel at the same time. Once we have that completed, do a chain up of one and cut, repeat on the other side, and then I will meet you back. So we have just finished up both of our shoulder seams. Now we're going to seam our side. Now our side seam is gonna be done with an outside loop slip stitch seam. So we're gonna start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning the seams that we just did for the shoulders are now along the inside because this outside loop slip stitch seam is gonna look like another slip stitch row. Then insert your hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Then from here, start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert only into that front loop. Next, find that next stitch into the back panel. Insert your hook only into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from you. Then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. That's our first one, let's do the next. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert only into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop. Then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then I will meet you back right after we finish up the other seam. All right, so we are back. Everything is all seamed up. Now we're ready to get started on our sleeves. So first things first, we're all gonna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up. Then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam within the armhole. Then making sure that we are all working clockwise or to the left, we're gonna start with our single crochet row. So what we're gonna do is start with a chain one and working our way up our underarm, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row. So this is my first side row right here. I'm gonna find that top loop and insert with one single crochet. This is my next side row, find that top loop and insert with another single crochet. 
So continue with one single crochet into every side row and I'll meet you back once we reach our stitches. And just as a really quick tip, we should all have the same amount of single crochets as underarm rows that we made when we did the front and back panel. We've just put one single crochet into every side row. We do want to make sure that we're remembering the amount of single crochets that we did for this portion when it comes to doing every odd number row for this portion of our sleeve. But once we reach this portion, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every stitch, so pretty simple, making our way all the way up and over. Then when we reach the underarm portion on the other side, continue with one single crochet into every side row. Should end up with the same amount of single crochets as this portion over here because it is still one single crochet into every side row. Then slip stitch into that chain space and then I'll meet you back. So now that our single crochet row is now complete, we have slip stitched into that chain space. Now our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So right after we've slip stitched in that chain space, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way all the way up and over. So just as a refresher, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And I'll meet you back at the end of this row. So we are back. Our back loop slip stitch row is complete. Now we're going to get started on our following row. So once we've slip stitched into that chain space, we're all going to chain one, flip our work, and start with one back loop single crochet for the same amount of single crochets that we did on top of the underarm portion. So for those of you that had my numbers, I had a total of 11 single crochets here. So I will now be doing 11 back loop single crochets. So just to do the first one, finding that first stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop with a single crochet and I will do a total of 11. So now that we have our back loop single crochets, we're now going to do a decrease of two back loop single crochets. So insert your hook into that next stitches back loop, pull through, next stitches back loop as well, pull through for three loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all three. Then from here, we're going to be putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the same amount of stitches as single crochets that we did on top of our underarm, so for me 11, plus an additional two because we're going to be doing our decrease on that side as well. So I will meet you guys back when I have 13 stitches left. So I've made my way down with my back loop half double crochets and I have left the amount of stitches that I needed. So the same amount of single crochets that we did on top of our underarm portion plus two. So now we're going to basically mirror what we did over here. So what we're going to do from here is a decrease of two back loop single crochets. So into that following stitches back loop, pull through, next stitches back loop, yarn over, pull through, pull through all three, and finish up the row with one back loop single crochet into the rest of our stitches, and then I'll meet you back. Our first three rows for our sleeve are complete. Now we're going to do our following row, which is going to be a back loop slip stitch row, but with no increases and no decreases. So right after we've slip stitched in that chain space, chain one, flip our work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then I'll meet you back. We are back. Our first four rows for our sleeve is complete. Now all we're going to do from here is continue to repeat our two previous rows until this sleeve portion becomes nice and snug on our arm. So since this is going to be a bell sleeve, we want this to be nice and sleek when it comes to our bicep and all the way down to our elbow. So we want to make sure that we're repeating these rows until it gets nice and comfy, but not too tight. Once we have that, I will meet you guys back right after a back loop slip stitch row. We are back. I have just completed the shoulder portion of my sleeve. I have a total of 18 rows. This length is roughly two and a half inches or six centimeters. And now from here, we're gonna be doing a few more of rows that are similar to this. That's gonna help even out our sleeve once one is won. So what we're gonna do is chain one, flip our work. Everyone's following row should be our single crochet row because we should have all finished up our slip stitch row. And we're gonna start by putting one back loop single crochet into every stitch for the same amount of stitches that we did for the underarm portion. So for me, I'm gonna be doing 11 back loop single crochets. So we are back. My back loop single crochets are complete. From here, we're just gonna be doing back loop half double crochets into every stitch, closing off the row with our back loop single crochets again. So basically the same as our other single crochet rows without the decrease because it's already nice and snug on us. So from here, yarn over and just into that next stitch, insert with a half double crochet. And just to finish off this row together, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the same amount of single crochets that we did along the top of our underarm. So for me, I will meet you back when I have 11 stitches left. So we've made our way around with our back loop half double crochets. 
Now we're just going to finish off the row with our back loop single crochets and then I'll meet you back. So we are back. That single crochet slash half double crochet row is completed. From here, our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, so the same way that we've been doing them. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows, so those rows won't have any increases or decreases, until we now have a sleeve that once when we try it on, lays completely horizontal on our arm. When we have that, I'll meet you back right after a slip stitch row. We are back. My evening out rows are now complete. So I have a total of 30 rows now. This length is roughly four inches or 10 centimeters. We should have all ended right after a slip stitch row. And our following row is gonna be a back loop half double crochet row. So from where we're at, chain two, flip our work. Put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. So we've made our way all the way around with our back loop half double crochet row. Now I'm just gonna show you how we're going to close off the row and our following row is gonna be another back loop slip with no increases and no decreases, so that's per usual. So all we're gonna do to close off our half double crochet rows is count up the chain two that we made when we started this row and slip stitch into that second chain. Now this row is complete. From here, chain one, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. And we're just gonna continue on with our two previous rows until we have a portion that can reach roughly around our elbow. Now we wanna meet back right after back loop slip stitch row because we are gonna do just a few decrease rows that goes about an inch or two past our elbow and then we can get started on the actual bell sleeve detail. So we are back. I have just finished up the length of my sleeve. This is roughly right about where my elbow is. I have a total of 52 rows. My length is roughly eight inches or 20 centimeters. Now from here, we're gonna do more of our half double and slip stitch rows, but now we're just gonna be doing some decreases into the half double crochet rows. Now for this portion, we're just going to continue on with our decrease rows until we reach roughly an inch or two past our elbow and then we can get started on the bell. But what we're going to do is do the decrease row, which is going to be the half double crochet row together, and then you guys can implement wherever you want the decreases to be because for some it might be a little too tight, some it might be a little too loose. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to do the decrease half double crochet row. So we all should have ended right after a back loop slip stitch row. We're all gonna chain two and flip our work. Now all this decrease row is gonna be, it's gonna start and end with a decrease of two back loop half doubles. So to get that started, yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through. Next stitch's back loop, pull through for four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four, and continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two stitches. So we've made our way around with our back loop half doubles, leaving the last two stitches. Now we're gonna close off the row with a decrease of two back loop half doubles. So yarn over. Into that second to last stitches back loop, pull through. Into that last stitches back loop, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all four. Then to close off the row, just like our previous half double crochet rows, slip stitch into that second chain that we made, and that's it. Chain one, flip our work, and then do our slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. Like I said, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows, but only decreasing into the half double crochet rows where you guys see fit until we reach about an inch past our elbow. And then I'll meet you guys back right after back loop slip stitch row so we can get started on the bell. So I am back. I have just finished up the decrease portion of my sleeve. Now, as you guys can see, I have some dark blue stitch markers into place. So just to let you guys know where I did my decreases, I just did a decrease into every other half double crochet row. And I did end right after a slip stitch row. So that gives me a total of 64 rows for this portion. My length is roughly 11 and a half inches or 29 centimeters so far. Now we can get started on the bell. So what we're gonna do is first switch out to our five and a half millimeter hook just to get a flowier bell. Then we're gonna get started on the following half double crochet row. So chain two, flip our work. And for everyone, no matter what size we're making, we're gonna start with one back loop half double crochet into the first 12 stitches. Now that we have our first 12 back loop half double crochets, into that next stitch, we're all gonna do an increase of two back loop half doubles. And for this first row, it might be a little bit hard to work into because we are using a bigger hook, but it's just gonna be a little difficult for this row. Now that our increase is completed, so just two back loop half double crochets into that stitch, we're gonna continue this, making our way all the way around. So 12 back loop half double crochets, another increase, 
So now that our first bell sleeve row is complete, which was our half double crochet row, our following row is going to be a slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. Then after that, we're just going to repeat our two previous rows. So from here on out, until we get the total length of the sleeve that we want, every half double crochet row is going to be 12 back loop half double crochets with an increase of two into the following stitch, and then just repeat till we reach the end of the row. And then a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So go ahead and get the rest of our sleeve completed. Once we have the total length that we want, making sure that we all finish right after a half double crochet row, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you back. So we are back. The entirety of my sleeve is complete. I have a total of 99 rows and my length is roughly 22 inches or 56 centimeters. After my last row, I did do a chain up of one and cut. Then once we have one sleeve completed, go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and then I'll meet you back so we can get started on the bottom of our piece. So we are back. We're now gonna get started on the waistband of our piece. So first things first, we're all gonna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up. Then all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every side row. So start by inserting our four millimeter hook into any side row along the bottom of our piece. Insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And let's just do the first few together. So start by finding our first side row, and this is mine right here, which is this raised row. I'm gonna find that top loop and insert, starting with just one single crochet. Then we're all gonna start by finding our following side row, which is this divot for me. Find that top loop and single crochet. And just continue with one single crochet into every side row, making our way all the way around. Now, just as a really quick tip, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So once when it's completed and you slip stitch into your chain space, try on your piece, making sure that it's not too tight. If it is, reduce some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip. We are back. Our single crochet row is complete. Now from here, now that everything is fitting, we, and we have slip stitched into that chain space, we're all going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our waistband to be. Now I wanted two inches or four centimeters, so I made a chain 10. Now we're going to do a half double crochet row. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch. That's our turning chain. Then yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet into the chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook with a half double. From here, continue with one half double crochet into every chain. So now that we've put one half double crochet into every chain, we're gonna connect it into the base. But connecting it into the base is gonna be done a certain way because the ribbing that we're about to do is not reversible, kinda of like our sleeve. So making sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, we're all gonna be working clockwise or to the left. Then we're all gonna start by counting up the next two available stitches into the base. There's one, there's two. Into that second stitch into the base, insert with a half double crochet, and that slip stitch into the base doesn't actually count as a stitch, we just need it to connect. Then our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So in order to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. That slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch either, and flip our work. Then from here, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Then at the end of the row, our following row is gonna be a half double crochet row, so chain two, flip our work, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, and then I'll meet you back at the base just once more. We are back, we have just completed our first one, two, three rows for our waistband, and now we're just gonna connect it into the base together once more, just to make sure we all have it down. So it is going to be connected the same way as our previous row. So whenever we're inserting our half double crochet row into the base, we're all going to start by counting up the next two available stitches. There's one, there's two, and slip stitch into there. Now remember that slip stitch doesn't actually count as a stitch, that's just to connect. Then we need to work our way up to the following row, so slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you back so we can seam it all up together. So we are back. Our waistband is now complete. Now what we're gonna do from here is seam it up. But this seam is gonna be done the same way that we did the side seam, so I went ahead and already did mine. It was just an outside loop slip stitch seam. Now, just make sure that we work is flipped right side out, right side up. Do our outside loop slip stitch seam. And then if you guys end along the inside, do a chain up of one and cut. Or if you guys end along the outside like me, we're just going to do a single crochet row along the bottom of our waistband now. So inserting your same four millimeter hook into any one of the side rows along the bottom of our waistband, we're going to put two single crochets into every side half and one single crochet into every side slip. 
So what we're going to do is find our first side row. Mine is a side half double crochet row. Find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. Now this is my following side row, which is a side slip stitch row. Find that top loop and insert with just one. And that's it. Continue doing this, making way all the way around, and then I'll meet you back at the end of the row right after we do a chain up and one and cut. And just as a really quick tip, once when the single crochet row is completed, count out the amount of stitches that we have. We want to all make sure that we have an even number of stitches, so if you guys accidentally end on an odd number, go ahead and just add one additional single crochet into that last side row. We are back. Our single crochet row along the bottom of our waistband is complete, and we did do a chain up of one and cut. Now, what we are going to do from here is we're going to separate the front and the back panel. Now, there's not going to be any actual stitches for us to insert our stitch markers into, so I'm just going to vaguely talk you guys through it. What we're going to want to do is just find our side seam and just kind of trace that all the way down until we find the two stitches that's nearest to our side seam and then just insert your stitch markers into those two stitches. Then just find the halfway points from those two stitch markers, which should be on this side and making sure that we have the same amount of stitches on both sides of our stitch markers. Then we can get started on the bottom portion. So what we're all going to do is insert our four millimeter hook into one of our stitch marker stitches, then make an even number chain the length that we'd like for the bottom to be. I'd like for mine to be roughly 9 inches, so I went ahead and made a chain of 40. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do a single crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain 1. Into that chain that we blocked off for the second chain from our hook, insert with a single crochet. So insert, pull through, pull through 2, and continue with one single crochet into every chain. So we are back. We've put one single crochet into every chain. Now we're going to connect it into the base. So all we're going to do is just find that next available stitch into the base and insert with a slip stitch. Now this row is completed and that slip stitch doesn't actually count as a stitch. Now for this portion of our piece, it is going to be a three row repeat. So it's going to be a single crochet and then two moss stitch rows after that. So getting started on our following moss stitch row, we're going to Work our way up to the next row by slip stitching into that next available stitch into the base and flip our work. Now whenever we're working on our moss stitch row that starts along the top, we're always going to start it with a chain one. Then we're going to skip a stitch, single crochet into the next. That forms our first chain space and single crochet. So, so far we still have two stitches for this row. Then from here, continue to chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next until we reach the end of the row. We've just made our way all the way down with our moss stitch row. Now we're going to get started on our following moss stitch row. So whenever we're getting started on a moss stitch row that starts along the edge, what we're going to do is chain two. Now that first chain is going to count as our turning chain, that second chain is going to count as a chain, and then we're going to flip our work. And all we're going to do from here is skip that first stitch, which should be the single crochet from our previous row, and single crochet into that next stitch, which is our chain space. And that should give us the first two stitches for this row, so our chain space and our single crochet. From here, chain one, skip a stitch, into the next stitch, which is our chain space, insert with a single, and that's it. We're going to continue this until we reach the base. So we've made our way all the way down. We should all have a total of three rows, and now we're just going to connect this row into the base. So getting this started, just find that next available stitch into the base and slip stitch into there. To complete this row, remembering that that slip stitch doesn't actually count as a stitch. And now from here, it's going to be a repeat of our three previous rows. But since this is a three row repeat, so an odd number, sometimes our single crochet row can start along the bottom like how this first one did, or it can start along the base like how this one's about to. But the idea is generally the same. Just one single crochet into every stitch, then start your following moss stitch row, another moss stitch row, and then repeat all the way down. We're just going to continue to repeat these three previous rows with no increases and no decreases until we reach our following stitch marker stitch. Once we have that, I will meet you guys back right after we do a chain up of one and cut. So we are back. We have just finished up the entirety of the bottom. We did do a chain up of one and cut right after we reached our stitch marker stitch on the side. Then once we did that, I just inserted my hook into the next stitch marker stitch and then repeated everything I did here. So now we have two panels. Now what we're going to do from here is our collar. So making sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up. All we're going to do is a single crochet row along everything so far. So start by inserting your hook into the corner stitch where the front panel is, 
and then start by putting one single crochet into every side row, one single crochet into every stitch, and then make our way all the way around until we reach the corner of the flap, and then I'll meet you back. So now that our single crochet row along our neckline is complete, we're all going to get to starting on our collar. So right after we reach the top corner stitch of our flap, do a chain of one cut. Then making sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, we're going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch that our first single crochet was worked into for that previous row. We're inserting it into here because the half double slip stitch combination is not reversible. So what we're going to do once we have this, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook and start by making a chain the height that we'd like for this portion to be. I'd like for mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters, so I'm going to start by making chain six. And now that we have our chain, we're going to do our first half double crochet row. Now this portion is actually going to be done exactly the same way as our waistband, so I'm just going to talk you guys through it. We're going to block off that last chain, do a chain two, that doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, then half double crochet into the third chain from our hook, and continue with one half double crochet into every chain. Now that we've put one half double crochet into every chain, we're going to connect it into the base. So we're going to count up the next two available stitches, there's one, there's two, slip stitch it into that second stitch into the base, that doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect, then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, that still doesn't count as a stitch, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and that's it. From here, all we're going to do is continue to repeat these two previous rows exactly the same way that we did the waistband, and just make your way all the way up and around. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I'll meet you back, and then we can finish it up. Alright, so we are back. We have just finished up making our way all the way up and around with our collar. Now from here, we're just going to sew it down just to make sure it's not flapping around, and then we're all done. Now for this portion, there actually isn't much of a rhyme or reason to it, so I'm just going to kind of let you guys have at it, but I will talk you guys through my process that I did. So first things first, mine is actually already all seamed up. But what we're going to do is making sure that the bottom stays along the bottom, we're going to align the top corner with the stitch marker stitch that we had for the middle row. Just making sure that those are still together because that is still the middle point of our piece. And then I just seamed it within the back using a tapestry needle, and then I just kind of made sure that I cleanly went through the front panel and the back panel at the same time. And then same thing that I did for the front, just making sure that everything is aligned. I picked a row and just kind of seamed everything down using my tapestry needle, making sure that everything is as clean as possible. But once we have that completed, do a chain up one and cut, we are all done. And then the last thing we have to do is just weave in all of our ends. There you have it, y'all. Hope y'all enjoy the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all the next one. Bye.